Good morning, everyone. I want to share something with you real quick before we start our lesson this morning. I had a revelation that hit me this morning, and I've been quoting this passage for the longest. I started quoting it when I was in the nursing home, and I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't bathe myself. I couldn't do anything for myself I started quoting this passage and today this morning it's like a, it just opened up another level to me but I believe it's uh, Jeremiah 30 and 17 but it says heal all of my wounds and restore my health and I started thinking about that part I've been holding on to that heal all of my wounds but that restore my health hit me this morning because uh, after healing, you need to be restored. That means that you're able to do that and more than what you did before you got sick. Amen. And then I, I, I thought about uh, what my surgeon said to me. He said, before I had the last operation, he said, my goal is, is that you will be able to do at least 80 percent of what you could do beforehand and I looked at him and said I'm expecting to do more <laughs> than, than what I did beforehand and still I didn't it didn't click till this morning but I say, God, you are a restorer. Pastor used that passage all the time that you are a restorer of the breach. Remember that, Pastor? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm going to leave all that alone and get to, my, get to the teaching this morning. Our scripture is coming out of Revelation, the 22nd chapter. If you don't have a Bible, the Urshu will get you one, or, she will also, or you can also use your phone going to Revelation uh, 22. Now our scripture starts at 6, but I am going to uh, go to uh, 1. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick up at Revelation uh, 22 and 1. We're setting the scene here. Our subject for this morning is the Alpha and Omega. Okay. Uh, what we've got here, we know that we've got John out here on the Isle of uh, Patmos. He's been put there for the preaching of the gospel. He's in exile. And uh, Revelation opens up. Uh, it says that on the day of the Lord, he was out there worshiping on the day of the, and it was the day of the Lord. But what I want us to uh, look at, to take into our heart, the first of all is that the book of Revelation, uh, even as you begin the word, Revelation is from the word reveal. It means that Christ is going to be revealed. Now, we have seen him in other forms. We've seen him in other administrations. OK, and we have talked a lot uh, through the years uh, about Jesus. But in Revelation, you're going to be see him operate as the Christ and not just Jesus, but he is Jesus Christ or he's Christ Jesus. Amen. And so you got uh, uh, one letter sheet there that I didn't even intend to. I had already did it. And it's called The Life of Jesus Christ to Revelation. And uh, I kind of laughed at myself. I said, God, you're ahead of me. So uh, I thank you for that. As I begin reading uh, from Revelation, the 22nd chapter this morning, and I'm reading out of the NLT, it says, Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life. Now, we're talking about John. He's the one that's out here on on the uh, Isle of Patmos. And he said the angel showed him a river with the water of life, clear as crystal. It was flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. And of course, we know the Lamb was defied as Jesus. It flowed down the center of the main street 
On each side of the river grew a tree of life. I want you to grab hold to that because we know that uh, in the book of Luke, I believe 16, 17 chapter, uh, we find out in Genesis, I'm sorry, we find out that the tree of life was in the garden of Eden. And we know that Jesus was a type of the tree of life for every man that ate off. If you ate off of it, you will live eternally. Unfortunately, didn't nobody eat off of it. And so death came in. But what we have is that God did not do away with the tree of life. He simply moved it and now is sitting in paradise. Okay. Okay. So each side of the river grew, not a, grew a tree of life bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month. Now, man, that's something else because one day we're going to eat off of that tree. Amen. It said the leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there, and his servants will worship him, and they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. If you don't, I said last week uh, we were going to get a new name. We don't know what that name is yet. But God knows that name is going to be written in our foreheads. Amen. I would definitely like part of my name would be faithful unto death. <laughs> oh, glory to God. That's that's my goal is to be. Because God told me in 1993, 1997, sitting in a church at 5901 Martin Luther King on a Sunday morning, he said to me, Diane, be thou faithful unto death. And I said, yes, Lord, <laughs> I will. So I, I, that's my goal. Yes. Can't be, I'm not faithful as somebody else, but I can, I can make, be, oh God, let me leave it alone. And they will see his face and his name will be written on their foreheads. And there would be no night there, no sleep. No need for lamps or sun, for the Lord God will shine on them and they will reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, we're picking up where our lesson is this morning at the sixth verse. The angel said to me, everything you have heard and seen is trustworthy and true. The Lord God who inspires his prophets has sent his angel to tell his servants what will happen soon. Thank God he didn't leave us ignorant. Amen. That message is Jesus is coming. Look, I'm coming soon. These are the words of Jesus. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. He said, I, John, am the one who heard and saw all these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me, but he said, no, don't worship me. I'm a servant of God, just like you and your brothers, the prophet, as well as all who obey and is written in this book. Worship only God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Then he instructed me, do not seal up the prophetic words in this book. For the time is near. Let the one who is doing harm continue to do harm. Let the one who is vile continue to be vile. Let the one who is righteous continue to be righteous. That's what we say all the time that, uh, you know, you so many times you hear people say uh, it's time for the church to get right. The church needs to already be right. Amen. It's not a point of getting right. It's a point of being right and staying right. Amen. Because you don't know when he could come. He said, I'm coming like a thief in the night. Amen. So when he said, when the world says peace and everybody's having a good time and everything is going well, that's when he's going to decide to show up. Amen. And so I, you, we don't have time to be trying to pack up your bags. Oh, no, we better already be ready. Glory to God. And he said, 
let the one who is righteous continue to live righteously and let the one who is holy continue to be holy. And then he said, Jesus, the words of Jesus said, look, I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. This is why last week you have a white sheet, and I told you to bring it back this Thursday night. It had seven, five crowns plus. He was talking about rewards. That, that plus is I don't know what that reward is going to be because he didn't say. He said, but I'm bringing it with me when I come. Amen. And then he says, I was subject. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. What does that mean, God? He explains it. I'm the first and I'm the last. I'm the beginning and I'm the end. He said, blessed are those who wash their robes. They will be permitted to enter through the gates of the city and eat the fruits from the tree of life. Outside the city are the dogs, the sorcerers, the sexually immemorial, the murderers, and the idol worshipers, and all who love to live a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this message for the churches. Oh, do you hear it this morning, church? He said, I am both the source of David and the heir to his throne. I am the bright and morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come. The spirit is the Holy Spirit. And the bride is the church. And we're saying, come. Let anyone who hears this say, come. Let anyone that is thirsty, come. Let anyone who desires to drink freely from the water of life. And I so solemnly declare to everyone who hears the works of prophecy written in this book, if anyone adds anything to what is written here, God will add to that person the plagues described in this book. You don't want to add nothing to Revelation. He told you uh, in, in the beginning, he said, blessed is that that it read it. He said, you may not understand it, but there's a blessing for you just to be able to read it. He said, if anyone removes any of the words from this book of prophecy, God will remove that person's share in the tree of life and in the holy city that are described in this book. That holy city is the new Jerusalem that's one day coming down. Amen. Uh, he who is the faithful witness to all these things say, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. That's what, <laughs> that's what he said. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people. Now I'm getting back to this subject, the Alpha and the Omega. He explained what that was. He said, I'm the beginning well, let's take it all the way back to the beginning. The beginning is Genesis 1. When he said, he says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen? Now, theologians tells us that we are dealing with the world between Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, but that's not our subject today, and so we're not, we're not trying to get to that. But we will fall on down into uh, Genesis 2, where it says, uh, it talks about uh, the world was, it was void without form. So we know that something happened there. But that's not our point today. Our point is, is that when God begins to speak, God begins to open up his mouth and say, let there be. Well, what did he use? He used the word of God. Amen. It was his words that came out of his mouth in the beginning that formed the world. Okay, John lets us know in John 1 and 1 that in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen? So we know that from the beginning, if we start there, he's the Alpha. Amen? He's there from the very beginning all the way. 
Okay, but then let's let's follow him a little bit further because even after God gets through uh, doing all of this and he says all the way through that second chapter, he keeps saying, uh, opening up his mouth and saying, let there be. And let there be, let the firmaments and, and let the waters divide themselves and, and all of this. And he did all of this by the word of God. Amen. It was his word. And so then even then when we go over to Colossians, he tells us that uh, God has given his word, Jesus, the, uh, 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 Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? He he has given, not the responsibility, but he's given it to him uh, for the glory. He's, he's given him the credit. That's the word I'm looking for. He lets you know that he has the credit for the formation of the world. Not only that, but as we continue, we find out that he still has the credit for upholding the world by the power of his word. Amen. All of that has been give, given credit to Jesus. That the, his word is the reason why the planets are not running into each other. His word is the reason why we have uh, 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 these uh, different things. I think one just came uh, to the earth. Or uh, this year. Uh, amen. But it didn't fall and destroy the earth. Amen. Because it is his word. Everything is upheld by the power of his word. Amen. And so that's why you will often see in your letters where I say that the word of God is the most powerful weapon in the planet. Amen. Glory to God. Okay. And so then even as we continue, the alpha is still rolling because uh, when we get to the third chapter of Genesis, we find out that God said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a promise. I'm going to put this word in flesh and I'm going to send him uh, to, to, to defeat the enemy that has stolen my plan for your life. Amen. And so then as we roll on down to Genesis, uh, to Luke, we find out that uh, the Gabriel comes and say, it's time now. And the appointed time has come. So this word is now going to take manifestation and it's going to come to the world in, in, inside the womb of a woman. And he's going to come legally. Amen. So that, and he's going to become human so he can redeem a human. God knew that the bulls and the cats and the dogs and whatever could not identify us. For us, he knew that the blood of a heifer and, and, uh, and, and, and the sacrifices of, of goats and all of that would not take care of the sin that had been placed upon our life because of Adam giving dominion of the earth over to Satan. All right. And so now we know that Jesus keeps getting credit because here he is. He didn't come through the wound of a woman, but he didn't come uh, uh, to be king. Israel thought that he came to be king, but instead he came to be savior. Amen. Thank God he took the time out to save us. Amen. Okay, and then not only that, but even after coming into the world and identifying himself, he was rejected. Now, all of that stuff was, but yet he still went to the cross. And, did, and he didn't just stay on the cross, oh, but he went in the grave. Amen. And, and not only that, but thank God he didn't stay in the grave because he's still in the alpha state because he's still the first. He's the first man that ever went into the grave rose from the dead that ain't got to die again. Amen. So, so he's still in the stage of alpha because he said, I'm alpha. I'm the beginning. Amen. So he ain't even got to the omega part yet when he does all of this. Okay. And so then as we go on through, we find out that after he becomes savior, uh, and he's died, he didn't stay dead. He rose from the dead. And then he became, according to Peter, the only begotten son of God. Amen. So he's the one that, the only one that was raised up from the dead that ain't got to die again. Oh, yeah, Lazarus was raised from the dead, but Lazarus had to die again. 
the widow's son was raised from the dead, but she had to die again, you know? And so there are men, whether you've been in accidents or, or we've heard testimonies of people that have died and, and come back to life, but they got to die again. But Jesus said, I'm the resurrection. I'm, I'm, I'm the one that got up, not only that, but I'm the life. Amen. I, I, I'm alive to live even forevermore. And because I live, you can live. Amen. Because I got up, guess what? <laughs> you go get up. Amen. The grave could not hold him down because he was blameless. He was spotless. There was no sin in him. So the grave couldn't keep him. Amen. He's still in the alpha stage, okay? And so now here he is as he ascends and goes uh, after he's raised from the dead. Now uh, he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Oh, yeah, he's still in the alpha stage, okay? And not only that, but he's interceding and praying for his church. Glory to God. But he's still in that stage. But guess what? After a while, the 19th chapter of Revelation says, he's coming back. Oh, yeah. It, but he's coming back. He's coming back riding on his white horse. <laughs> he's coming back with his virtue, this plate that's been dipped in blood. Amen. Glory that. He's got a name on his forehead. That nobody knows what that name is but him. Not only that, but he got a name on his thigh that says faithful and true. <laughs> oh, glory to God. So he said, I'm still in that beginning stage because I ain't through yet. You, can, you, you can't get me through till I crossed over for eternity. But I want you to know that even when you cross over into eternity, I remember hearing him say uh, in John about the 11, about 11, 25, he said, though you be dead, yet shall you live. So when you come into Christ, my grandmother used to say, my mother used to say all the time, done died one time. <laughs> Ain't got to die no more. Oh, yeah, she was, she was saying that little, you know, they call him Dr. Watts, you know, yeah, that's that, that's that old school, but I was brought up on the old school, you know, yeah, but she was singing that song, done died one time. I ain't got to die no more. And so glory to God, when we come into Christ, we, there is an exchange made. He takes our death and gives us his life. Amen. So that we can live eternally in him. Even Ephesians 2 and 6 say we see it now in heavenly places. Where at? In Christ. Amen. So he said, if I, if my word abide in you, in, 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 if you, if you abide in my word and my word abide in you, you can ask whatever you will. Why? Because we're one. Amen. There's nothing too small for you to talk to God about. There's nothing too big for you to talk to God about because all things is his. I was reading the other day and it came to me that part even when he said he has given us all spiritual things to ritually enjoy. Amen. Okay. So now here we are. That 19th chapter. Ah, but I need to back up a little bit. Because the 19th chapter, he's getting ready to come to do war. That's not where I want you at yet. I want you over here where we don't have a date or a time. He's still the alpha, okay? But he's coming back in the air, not to the earth. And he's calling up the dead that died in him first. See, they, they, they already got, the, the, the soul and the spirit is already in paradise. But they just ain't got nobody. The body went into the ground. It went back to dust. But that DNA that's got God is still in it. it when he calls it, it's going to come up to me to, jo the, the, to join with the soul and the spirit. Amen? And those of us that are here 
that remain when he called them up, we're going to be changed in the twinkling and a moment of an eye. Oh, you might be laying in the bed and the ceiling open up and you're going up. The ceiling is not going to stop you from going up with the alpha. Amen. And so then after this, uh, then when he comes back in the 19th chapter, we're going to be whole. Our bodies going to be connected with our souls and our spirits. Amen. And it says that he's going to come back riding that white horse and all of his angels are with him. And guess what? <laughs> so is his church. Glory to God. So is his church. Amen. We're going to be dressed in white linen, riding horses. Ain't never been on a horse in my life. But I understand ain't no fear in heaven. So I can't be afraid of the horse. Amen. Glory to God. So I, I, I want me one of them pretty white stallions, you know, that got a little, got just a little color, maybe some red uh, on him representing the blood. Amen. Oh, glory to God. So now we're getting ready to step over into that omega part, okay? Because he said, I'm the end. Where is the end? The end is eternity. But yet, there's no end. Because in eternity, there is no end. The Bible said that after, listen, the song said, well, somebody said that even after 10,000 years, it's, it's, it's just begun. Amen. And so when we go to sleep in God, that's nothing but the body making an exchange. And so one day we're going to get over with the Omega. The Omega is eternity without end. The Omega is the blessing without end. He is the first. He got started in the beginning and he's going to be the one to end it in the end. Amen. So we are, he is the Alpha and he is the Omega. And so we thank God this morning for being that. I'm glad, you know, I, I, I notice that when I be studying, I see it. I, I've seen it, but I really didn't think anything about it until I was looking at, I think uh, it was John, when, when they were talking to him about Jesus, when he said, how is it? What, what do you mean uh, uh, talking about Abraham? You're not 50 years old yet. What do you know about Abraham? And he said, before Abraham was. I am. Amen. There's, there's your alpha. I was here before Abraham. And they say, Abraham been dead. You know, Abraham been dead yeah, uh, 2,000 years. And, and what you mean you when you met Abraham, when you know that you know Abraham. Amen. But there's no time in God. He is the beginning and he's the end. And the thing about it is being in God, we have no end. All we're going to do is, is put off mortality and put on immortality. There we go over into the Omega. Amen. Well, God bless you today.